Hey, Steve. Okay, here we go. Oh, wait, hold on. I didn't put in my microphone. That was pretty silly of me. Okay. Okay, so here we are. So we got a speed timer here. It's interesting because it's 61380011. The sweep hand has been painted. I don't know what it looks like under there. The rest of it looks good. Everything does reset to zero slowly. Hmm. Okay. Let's uh let's get that back off of there. What do we got going on? Uh, got a nice little dot in the middle where the screw for the winding weight was touching the case back. I wonder why. Well, we've got some case pitting. And the case was refinished, so this is one that looks like it was definitely in a hot and wet environment. Some nice pitting in there. Definitely running. Uh, well, that's probably why your movement ring spring is gone. Let me get this set up properly. Okay, sorry, I just had to get that set up correctly. So, let us see what we can see. Yeah, ooh, yeah, got some pitting on there. Okay, movement looks decent. Seals look dirty, but they don't look squished. It looks like it probably got new seals at one point. Yeah, that's an old seal. That one's that one's as just as hard as anything. Okay, it's one of those situations. Your movement ring is, I'm sorry, your dial ring is not, it's the, it's the wrong one, has the wrong dial ring. Okay, hang on just one second for me. So when I see things like the wrong dial ring and uh, lots of pitting in a case that had, that got refinished heavily, that's an indicator to me that we are going to have some fun. Uh, oh, right. Okay, hang on a second. You've got... Uh, the dial looks pretty good, actually. You've got some patina over here. You've got a couple little scratch marks here and here, but honestly, it doesn't look bad. It doesn't look bad. Hands are original. You still have some... Your orange flashes are pretty unfaded, which is nice. Um, and whoever built this thing... It clicks over to the new day perfectly at midnight. They did they did a nice job with that. Okay, so I'm going to get the hands and the dial off of this thing, and let's see what's really happening. Hang on, please. Okay, yeah, so here's your dial. And on the back we see it is dated September of 1977. Your case back is dated... Uh, February of 1975 so the dial and the case back don't go together not that that really means anything it just kind of confirms what we already knew uh, which is that um, this got some interesting work this is the dial ring they put in this is for a small 6138 this is for like a, a John player special or something 
so that will have to be replaced. In the meantime, we get to do the fun stuff. Okay. Okay. Well, I mean, it's all fun, but you know what I mean. So we already ascertained that the reason there's a mark on the case back is because the movement ring spring is missing. Okay. Now look at that winding bridge. It's got a scratch here, but the metal looks great. And of course it's jeweled as it should be, which is always nice. Obviously we've got a runner. Look at that, clean. Yeah. Clean. Oops, I forgot. I forgot that. I gotta put that back in. Yeah, definitely a runner. And it resets to zero, which is good. And there's scratch on there. That looks... Action is nice and light, which is great. We've got some dust around this jewel that's sadly normal. It just is what it is. Okay, let me, let's depower the mainspring. Let's start ripping it apart. I don't see anything wrong right at the get-go. Okay, mainspring, depowered. Right there, we know where it is. Now I'm going to check to. Oh, that's nice and tight. No play on there. Sometimes you see these and they're really kind of worn, and you'll see a, have a lot of end shake on the on the pallet fork pivots. But this looks nice and clean too. The jewel's a little dirty. I'm trying to look at the faces here. Because that's the thing that always tells us what we need to know. Hmm. Okay. I don't see anything deadly right now. Put that over there. It's looking, looking pretty tight so far. Not real dusty, well, except for that, but... Hi. Hang on just one second for me. Okay. That's over with. Turns out we do not have any more Honey Nut Cheerios. Wait, wait, wait. thought I saw the wrong screw in there. Nope. 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 All good. All right. All 
Alrighty then. Boink. Yeah. Looks pretty good, pretty clean. Little bits of lubrication and there's definitely some some push over here on the side of this bushing from heavy resets. So I'm going to manually clean that and then it'll run it through. There is your minute counter wheel and pinion. Uh, it looks like that's holding together. Operating lever spring, hammer spring, and your hammer. Boop, there it goes. Huh, isn't that interesting? Ah. Huh. That was up on top of this lever. I wonder why. Huh, okay. Well, let's just keep pushing on. Get this stuff pulled apart. Those are all firmly seated, not too firmly, but as much as they should be. Okay. Still looking pretty clean. Sorry for the screaming. Despite the fact that it is, you know, a working day, because everybody's home, you get lots of noise, including an upset Sebastian. I wonder what he's pissed off about now. Interesting. I wonder. What's a, because those two things should not be able to come unconnected. There's no way that one should skip over the top of the other. So I'll have to look at that. Get this last screw out of there. Turn it. Alrighty. Gosh darn it, I have to stop saying that. Looks good. Lubrication is dry on the pivots. I'm sorry, on the jewels. Nice looking bridge though. Let's see, here we are. The area of wonder. And the thing that matters, your chronograph wheel. It's got a little bit of corrosion right near the tip of the pinion. I don't think you can really see it. See that sort of black section there? That's corrosion. But like it's corrosion that got cleaned and dealt with, but that's what it was. Okay, hang on just one second. Wheel is good, but we knew that. But it's always nice to check. It's a great thing. Hmm. Okay. And then this, the all-important intermediary wheel right there, if you ever forget that thing when you're putting your train back together. Ugh. Ask me how I know how much that sucks. When you bolt the whole thing together and you're like, wait, why doesn't this thing hand wind? Then you're like, oh. Okay. Let us see. Gosh, it really is clean. I mean, the lubrication is dry. Huh. 
<laughs> well, let's look at the main spring. Does not want to open up. That's a good thing. That's a good thing. We don't want these things to just snap open. That's nice. You want those nice, tight, nice tight fit. That looks pretty clean. Relatively speaking, that looks that looks pretty good. There is your main spring arbor. Let's get this out. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Okay, there's your barrel, the other side of it. Hang on, I'm looking at your mainspring. Hold on. Okay, have the mainspring out. Looks decent. It's interesting. It looks like there's... It almost looks like this thing got put together dry. Like, it doesn't look... Like, normally these things are filthy. Like, they're going to have grease and all kinds of other wacky stuff in them. But this is real clean. That's interesting. Uh, I don't think it had any lubrication in it. Okay, here's another thing I need to... Two more things I need to hand clean. Okay. So now, let me get this other holder. I like to use this one when I'm on the other side of a 6138. It holds it more securely. Okay, so let's get that going. And this going. And let's look and see what's going on over here. Typical thing your English Sunday is a little faded, but the rest of it is fine. And whoever did this work got the got this spring, I'm sorry, this C clip put in the right place, in the right facing direction, which is nice. Get off. flat to the plane. Not warped. Good news. Look at how clean that is. Look at that. Isn't that nice? Hmm. Isn't that nice? Gosh, if it wasn't for the fact that it was completely dry of lubrication, this would be quite the piece. Probably wouldn't need love at all, but I don't know. Let's find out. Okay, got the police screws, and I'll take the the calendar side apart on its own. Come on. Yeah, whoever did this work, they got these screws in the right place. Hmm. Very specific screws. Would you get out? Okay, I'm gonna pull this off because I want to look at some of the stuff on this real closely. So that whole calendar plate comes off, and then I'll take that apart. You can see the lower main spring arbor jewel there, right there. That's important. This whole assembly comes out. This is what makes a 6138 a 6138. All of this stuff. You can see all your operating levers and everything right here. So this is one of the things I want to look at. Oh, it's weird. Why is that? It looks like it's been blued. This is a nice movement. I think this is a nice movement. Yes, I do. So, you may have landed on your feet with this one. Because um, normally when I see something like this that had a lot of water that went through it, and um, a mix match dial, and incorrect parts like that wrong dial holder, um, my fear is always that I'm going to run into some real gnarly fixes. Typically, that's what I see. Uh, but this looks pretty good. This looks pretty okay. Put that 
right in there. Yeah, this looks okay. Okay, with these springs, I've got to be right on top of this, so I'm not going to film this take apart. Let's uh, let's break. I'm going to clean all this stuff by hand and then get it into the cleaners, and we're going to go from there. Okay, just looking at the uh, your case. Here's your crystal. It's 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 a decent looking crystal. Uh, I'm not sure who made it. It's got the correct frosting on it. It has a little chip on the side. I think it's a genuine Seiko. I think it's original that someone reworked. It's got a chip on the side, and it is slightly lower. I think someone polished an original. That's an original. Uh, it's already chipped, and they polish it to make it look pretty, but I would... Um, I would replace that personally, because there's less material on the top. Generally okay. Uh, when they did do this, they kind of weren't careful. I don't know if you can see... Sorry for the dirt on my hands. Right here... Uh, right there. The seal, the gasket, the crystal gasket got pinched. Uh, so this gasket is junk, unfortunately. There is... Chapter ring. It looks perfect. It's always good. And here is, yeah, this one too. They, it, it's dusty. They got it clean though, but it has some pitting around the top. But the ceiling surfaces look okay, huh? What's that stuff? This is where the, um, this is where the the seal was pinched. These two spots. No, it's nothing deadly, but. That's okay. We'll clean it up and we'll see how we're going. Alrighty. Ugh, I said it again. Okay. We are in the process of coming back together. I didn't find any obvious issues. Um, the your the center wheel jewel for the in the main plate was a little shifted out of position, but that does happen, and I tightened that up. I have the front side and the calendar side together, so really this is, we're just looking at the fun part now. And I know everybody likes fun. Heaven, heaven knows I do. Okay, well nice and clean. Clean, clean, clean. Shiny. So not that it was dirty before, but it's, it's very clean now. Let's do the thing we're supposed to do. Let's let that sit there for a second. All your jewels looked good. Uh, like I said, this is a good looking movement. It's very interesting how this all worked out. Good looking movement. Oh, whoops, I forgot to do one thing. Silly me. Sorry for all the squeaking. Okay, so this now is the big important thing. Boy, gosh, I tell you, if you ever forget to do that, man, you're screwed because you have to pull the whole darn thing apart. There, that. That's your key element. Already then. Gosh darn it, I said it again. I only say it when I'm doing these videos. So here is, there's the bridge. We've got a little bit of to do a little bit of lubrication. You have a little slot cut out right here. And let me get something a little finer actually. Sorry. Put those right in there. And you have another one that is right over here. Just like 
like that. And you have the last one. You just want to hit the top of that just a tiny amount. Now, yeah, pivots now. So hang on just one second for me. Okay, there's that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, lastly, we're gonna get that going. Right. Okay, now, darn it. We're gonna go in there. And you gotta get these gears to mesh. You can see the little window right there. Drop in these two wheels. Hang on a second for me. Okay. Mm -hmm. There, you see? Just like that. Cool. Alrighty then. I stopped myself. I stopped myself in time. Maybe I should start saying next. So next, I'm gonna just get this bridge set. So I don't have to worry about it popping out of place. That is feels nice and smooth. Good. More screws. Check that reset because you've got this this reset lever here has an extension that hits this one up here. That's the reset for the 12-hour wheel. And that's what we want to do. Come on. There. If you ever have to fight something, you're doing it wrong. This stuff should never have to be fought. Okay, need a little bit, just a hair of a lube, right under the leading edge of this reset. That goes there. You don't really have to do that, but I do it. I like to do it. And as always, it's a tiny mount. thing is you never want to use too much lubricant because then it goes places you don't want it to go oh would you stop it okay there's that 
Oh, of course it though. I'm getting ahead of myself. Would you stop it? Stop it. Hang on. Okay. Now, pillar wheel. The all-important super-duper pillar wheel. Sorry, I'm doing this one off camera. I need to just look at it real close. Make sure I know. I get the things I'm supposed to get. Okay. Always with this, you want to make sure that you have this finger is this way because this will rotate 360 degrees. Nothing, I mean, there's lots of things that suck more, but it's unfortunate to. Uh, it's unfortunate to get this in place and then realize this is backwards. Okay, here's another little thing to be careful with. With these two screws, let's see if I'm still up here. This screw and the other operating uh, arm, the screws are the same. And there is, there's no, the bottom of the shaft, the hole here is deeper than the shaft on the screw. So if you screw it down too hard, what happens is, is that the head of the screw shears off and you are left with, um, you're left with that in your, uh, in the, main plate and you got to get that out and that's always fun okay. sorry for the screaming okay and then before you screw this down you want to make sure that it is these are closed and they're where they need to be. Yeah, just firm that down just a little bit. You never honk on it because you'll snap it right off. Ask me how I know that. Good. Firmed in place. Ow. Okay. Now we're starting to get somewhere. So you guys only really get to see the fun part. All the fun bits. Now, you've got, this happens a lot, you have a little bit of, like, bluing staining on the chrome here. I'm not quite sure how that would have happened. It's really odd. It's probably, uh, it's, it's a chemical reaction to some lubricant that was used, I think. What's up, honey? What's that? What's what? That red one. Which one, red one? Oh, that's a, that's one of those old school fake dials from that was big, like in the I don't know, 2008 time frame. People don't. Yeah, for a while, that was what everybody was using when they were modding um, 6309s when they were cheap. Oh, whoops! I forgot something. You may or may not be back. You may or may not be back. Your Schrodinger's. Sabrina. Come on. 
pull this back out like that. Drop this baby and come on, get in there. Stop fighting me. So anyway, this is not staining or dirt or anything. It's it's literally the the plating on the piece, the chrome is like it's blued. I have no idea why. Trust me, it is clean. Put that in there. Put this in there. Make it work. Come on. There. See? Now. This intermediate wheel in. I, it, it amazes me. I remember back in the day when trying to assemble this section of a chronograph was always it was just an amazing pain in the ass. But it would take me so long to get it done, and now it's typically it's pretty quick. Okay. amounts, tiniest, tiniest amounts. And then I gotta switch over to this over there. A teeny tiny bit on there. Just that. Good. Last thing is I need some S4. Sorry for the bunking. You want S4. It's always important to have the tension set on these correctly on these 6138s because with the reset is too hard because they want it they wanted it harder you can really mess jack stuff up let's see there see look at that I think that's right There we go. So I have that in place. Everything is dropped, and I just verified that everything turns, which is always what you want to do. You want to make sure you have a running condition before you firm anything down, because if you just go for it, you'll snap a pivot off. And as usual, ask me how I know that. Yep. Yep. All right. Get the rest of the screws on here. Come on. doing that that sort of it helps run the lubrication around a little bit before we go for it okay now now we start getting into the final stretch well final stretch for the movement anyway get this thing running it is the end of the day and I want to let this thing run in over the weekend or 
Alrighty. Gosh darn it, I said it again. I need one of those shock collars they put on dogs so, uh, so that every time I say that, I get zoinked. Don't you think that would be good? I also need it to actuate and zap me whenever I think about ice cream. So we know the train is in running condition because we saw it spin around. We know the 12 hour resets because I did that. Okay, so now if I go and put some power in, you should see that pallet fort flick, and that is in fact what we saw. Oh, come on. Don't you mess with me. Firm those down. The reason I like to do that is again, you want to make sure that the ugh, darn it, you want to make sure that before you screw it down, you have the you have the thing sighted correctly. Come on, get in there. There. Here I am talking about stuff and not paying attention. Touch it down, it's not really firmed. Power to the mainspring, make sure that. Okay, we are, yeah, we are live. Firm down these screws. One second. Okay. Now the moment of truth. Come on, stop fighting me. Okay. is going on. Okay, there she blows. Oh, do I need to take another cut at this? Shouldn't have to. Mm-hmm. Seriously, twice. Okay, I want to. This doesn't work. There we go. There we go. She's running. Balance is nice and flat and plain. Still runs when the chronograph is turned on and click just like that. Look at that. Okay, so let me pause for a second. I want to uh, then we'll look at the numbers. Okay, let's find out together.
hopefully the numbers are good and that means I can adjust out the beat error and stuff and then think about the end of the day. Which straight? I like it, you have that nice alignment. Okay, we got some beat error. Um, I got beat error and loss, but let's, oh, I always go for the beat error first, so let's get rid of that beat error. And I'm going to try, I'm going to try and adjust the beat error to my left, which is also going to shorten the hairspring travel, which is going to increase the, the accuracy. So let's try that. That was a tiny little touch. Ah, you see? Let's see if those numbers are... Yep, see, I was right. So I'm not adjusting the accuracy at all. All I'm doing is getting rid of the beat error, and it's pulling the accuracy up. Tiny little amount. See, we are getting there. That's pretty tight on there. Let me try that just... Might have gone too far. We'll find out. Uh, okay, so all I've done was adjust the beat error. I didn't do anything else. So now I'm going to adjust the accuracy down to try to bring it to flat. Oop, went too far. And there we are. It's still losing just a little bit, but I'm going to leave it. That's good numbers for now. No, that's a good place to start, considering it's been running for all of four minutes. Get that a little... No, no too ambitious. Come on. Okay, okay. I think I need to stop fooling with it, but of course I, I can never say no. Okay, so it is the end of the day. I'm going to clean up and let this run in and we'll see where we're at, but boy, that's, that's, those are that's a decent place to start for running for only a few minutes. It's a good movement. I really am shocked. I thought when I saw the movement, the dial ring being the wrong one, that we were really in for it. But, hey, that's pretty awesome. That's pretty sweet. That's pretty sweet. Okay, let's let that run, and I'm going to clean up the bench, and we'll see how we are doing tomorrow morning. I'm just sitting here watching the numbers. Well, they're steady, aren't they? There we go. That's what I was waiting on. Yeah, good movement. Steve, you you fell on your feet with this one. That's good movement. Alrighty, tomorrow. Okay, I am so close to being done. Okay, so your original sweep, you remember it was a weird blobby yellow. Um, it was crazy, by the way. I couldn't... Acetone wouldn't touch the stuff. Acetone didn't touch it. Thinner didn't touch it. I'm like, well, there's no way this stuff is water-based. Sure enough, it was like children's water-based pastel paint but underneath it was nothing there was no original paint at all so i pulled out one of my super secret special things original 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 and this isn't something that people see very often 
that is what these look like when they come. They have this little holdy tab right here. Also, your original, or the sweep that was on there was also incorrect for a 6138. It was cut really short. It was cut like down to here. It's supposed to be right up to that second track. So anyway, I mean, I considered repainting yours because the tube was good, but there's just, when Seiko made these, they, they painted the metal and then stamped them out. And so what that did is it made it very, very tight. Tight paint, very clean, and no paint at all on the sides. It's just, it's, it's very, very hard to make it look right. So, screw it. It's a good watch, it's good movement. Let's, let's make it right. I hope you agree. And there it is. There is sweep in place and there is the little there's the little end you can see how flat the paint is okay cool well I'm gonna keep going ahead okay Steve just about at the end of the game here oops I think she's Ready to come back. Okay, final final words. Okay, Steve. So here is all your old stuff, including your old dial ring and the seals and the old crystal, and your hand is in there. So that's all good to go. And there it is. It's a lovely watch. Now, one of the things that I did do, and I always try to do this with 6138s, is I set the reset light. Uh, I do that on purpose. Uh, originally, when these came from the factory, they had a heavy reset, but with these days, you want to you want to protect the tube on the hand and also the chronograph wheel. So I, I'm not telling you anything you don't know, but I always say this. So it's I stop it right there and then click, and you'll see it it drags a little bit. That's by design. I can, I, I specifically set it so that's going to be a little slow for a reset. Um, if you want, I can tighten that up. I can make it a little stiffer. Me, I wouldn't. And I don't know. That's, that's really, that's about it. I hope you're happy with the process and how it all worked out. I'm, I think it came out really nice. You just can't replace the, there's, there's just no substitute for genuine new old stock Seiko for something like that. And it just makes the focal point of the whole watch. It just makes everything better. Okay. Thank you very much.